Hey everyone, in this part 2 of our tutorial series for making a 3D mobile scan into a CC head, we'll talk about how you can refine the material issues that we saw at the end of part 1, including how to fix your diffuse and normal textures. Let's start off with the eyes though first, which is an easy fix. In the Headshot V2 panel, you'll find some eye presets available, as well as some additional ones in the character pack under the Morphs group. You can also go into the eyeball group under morphs for a number of different eyeball morph adjustment sliders as well. If you have the CC base eye mesh selected in the scene manager, you can also then go to the materials tab and select the standard cornea right and left. Below that in the shader settings, you'll find more advanced options that allow you to make adjustments to the small details of the eyes, from iris color and roughness to other parts of the eyeball like the limbus and sclera. Ok, let's move on to editing the diffuse and normal maps next. With a mobile scan, you'll often notice some texture noise and even areas where the textures will be missing altogether. In our case, we're missing textures for the top of the head as well as an area of the jaw, and the mouth texture is also displaying incorrectly. In a lot of cases, you can resolve these issues by using the various mask presets in the Headshot V2 panel but small texture issues in certain areas may need to be manually fixed. To do so, let's find the standard skin head material from the materials tab and launch both our base color and normal textures into our photo editing software. In this case, I'm using Photoshop. Once both texture maps are loaded up in Photoshop, the next part requires a little bit of Photoshop magic. What I'm doing here is lassoing a part of the available hair texture and adding it to the areas without texture. The patch tool is a great way to replace a selected area with pixels from another part of the image. We won't go into the nitty gritty of this in this tutorial, but once you're done, be sure to merge all the layers you used and save. Once you do, the map will automatically update in Character Creator. With the normal map, we can use the eyedropper tool to get the base normal shade and then paint over the weird hair artifact places that we don't need. Since the poly count of this mobile scan is fairly low, the baked normal will have a lot of sharp edges. You'll want to try your best to smooth these out using various brush opacities or also taking advantage of the smudge tool. Do the same with the normal map and save it, and then when we return to Character Creator, we can see that the material for the face has been updated with the new maps we just edited. The manual map editing can be a bit tricky, but once you get the hang of it, the result will be well worth it as you can see. Our next step is to adjust the body morphs and our character's outfit. In the morph panel, you can find hundreds of sliders for the various parts of your character's body, providing unparalleled detail for body mesh editing. There are full body sliders that contain presets of number of other sliders, and you can also go into specific body morph sliders for more detailed refinements. Once you're satisfied with the body shape, you can then go into the content manager to find clothing that you can easily apply to your character. Here you will find all sorts of different categories and types of clothing, which will conform to your character's body shape and layer nicely over each other. You can also find a huge collection of clothing and accessory content in our content store. For a finishing touch for the face, you can also find wrinkle templates in the content manager as well as additional templates available for purchase in the content store. Once you apply them, you can then enter into the edit facial tool to test out the results for various facial muscle animation. This tool is used for keyframe editing and tweaking of animations, and there are also additional templates you can apply. Please check out our dedicated facial animation tutorials for more. In addition, there are tons of facial animation content that you can apply, including a collection of subtle, idle, and natural attitude animations in a pack called Digital Soul. These are very useful because they are a simple click and drag to apply, and you can combine them with the same type of body animations to give you a completely animated idle character like this within seconds. Thanks to Headshot version 2, you can quickly and easily make a mobile scanned face into a fully animatable character with both face and body capabilities. Whether you're looking for crowd animations, NPC characters, or marketing models, it's a great tool for quick and easy character generation. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next one.